and we're back. We're on, Deval. Uh, back and we're live. And by the way, Deval, the naming convention, we're in season seven, episode one. Oh, are we now? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is, this is, we're in our, this is our seventh year, bro. Like, seriously, yeah, people, okay. people have to realize this, right? Okay. So listen, look, we, if you haven't listened to the sixth, oh, the sixth year anniversary episode, um, so that happened on last week's one where we kind of spoke uh, about, um, what did we speak about last week? Shit, man, I'm losing my fucking Last memory. week was Planet of the Apes, I think. Planet of the Apes. Well, Planet yeah. of the Apes. Yeah, exactly. So this is season seven, episode one. Deval and I, we've got a huge mm. show because we're reviewing um, Furiosa, a Mad <sighs> Max saga. Mm. And um, it's been what, Deval? We saw, we spoke about this in, oh no, this so that came out before we started the show, by the way. What's that? What came out? Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It came out 2015, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we yeah. started, yeah, yeah, we started doing this yeah. in 2016. So, if, so 2018. It was, it was, so, <laughs> Jesus, man. 2018. Oh my gosh. Uh, so, a pretty, uh, you know, a long while away. But listen, look, folks, uh, you're listening to episode uh, 248. Mm -hmm. Don't be late. Don't be late. Actually, Devout, I think I missed that one up. I don't even think it's 248. I think it's like 288 or something. Two, 287. It's 287. <laughs> You're in heaven. heaven. <laughs> episode 280. We're 287 <laughs> episodes in, folks. So season seven, episode one. Uh, yeah, 300, so, you know, coming up to 300. 300. Spartans, you know, this Spartans. Is Flicksters. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, so listen, look, we've got a great show for you. Stick around uh, in about a half an hour's time. We'll bring you the review of Furiosa. There's a lot of stuff that we want to say about that. But before we do that, we've got the shout out. So Deval, please take it away. Yeah, a couple of shout outs today. First shout out goes to Natalie 24th. Go check her out on Instagram. Actress, uh, model, entertainer. Uh, she was actually reacting to something on Instagram. Uh, that was to do with retro, like cartoons and stuff like that. Mm. She's an old school uh, gal. She likes the old school cartoons, and uh, you know, Ducktales, Thundercats, He Man. I remember Ducktales? Yeah. So sometimes you know we're on Instagram and we see these retro things, and it's good to see who else yeah. you know likes that sort of thing. So do you like retro cartoons? And what's your favorite retro cartoon? Do that. Touch with us. There you go. Next shout out goes out to Ashley Laurel mm -hmm. uh, on Instagram. Go check her out, uh, Ashley Laurel. Uh, just really giving her a big shout out, actually. She, uh, I think she was posting something about her fitness regime and so on. And do you know what? A lot of our flicksters, a lot of our, our, our supporters mm -hmm. are keeping fit, which is a good thing. And it reminds us, or me anyway, that I need to keep fit keep sometimes. Fit. Exactly. The Hagen Dars wins, you know. And, Man, trust you know, so me, that battle, that resistance bat is real. A constant battle, <laughs> a constant battle. So Ashley Lowell reminded me, okay, got to keep fit. So Gotta yeah, fit, thanks a lot, Health, Ashley. Healthy body, healthy mind. All right, thanks for that. All right, let's get into movie news. Now, um, I used to devour no joke. Right, I watched. Uh, I used to watch The Apprentice, the UK version, anyway, okay. uh, all the time. And when I went back to the UK just very recently, I watched The Apprentice. It was on yeah. whilst I was there. So back in it's March, I was now, watching it. It's it mad. It's, honestly, <laughs> it's just a like, similar situation, same old things, and Alan Sugar doing the same thing. But the US, so mm -hmm. our friends in America, you had um, Donald Trump. He was doing The Apprentice. And did it start in America and then it came to the UK or vice versa? I think it started in the UK, you know. Okay. I'm pretty sure it started in the UK, I think, yeah. Yeah. So why is this in our news, Deval? So this one is, uh, oh, this is this is very interesting. First of all, uh, let's just, I mean, Trump is one of those characters that is divisive. Some people love yeah. him, some people hate him. It is what it is. I'm not going to get political. You know, uh, elections are coming up this year, not just for the UK, but for America. America. It's all happening. But yeah, this is called The Apprentice. It's going to be a film uh, that looks at the life of the sort of early, younger uh, Donald Trump in America, yes. in New this York, in a property mogul, you know, in the 70s and 80s and stuff like that. Uh, Trump is going to be played by Sebastian Stan, the Winter Soldier. Wow. He's going to be playing Trump. That's good casting. Uh, and it's going to be about Trump and his, you know, the people around him. Uh, and he's like, you know, lawyers, his team, how they navigate the, the that industry property and stuff like that and just how they do it you know all the deals all the dramas and stuff like that yeah. the cast is also going to be supported by jeremy strong 
who was right. in uh, Succession. He's going to be playing Roy Cohn or Roy Con. Okay. I don't, I don't know who that is, but um, and Trump's ex-wife uh, Ivana is going to be played by Maria Bakalova, and she's oh, the one that okay. she was. She was in, uh, um, you know, uh, Bora. Uh, Borat, yes, she was the lady, the young lady in Borat. Really, yeah. really great breakout role for great her debut, wasn't it, or something? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so she's going to be in that as well. So this is going to be directed, really interestingly, by Ali Abbasi. Some people I are know, thinking, who's Ali Abbasi? So Ali Abbasi, uh, he actually directed uh, uh, a few episodes of The oh, Last of Us. Oh, okay. Yeah, that Did also directed. Right? Uh, did he do Moonlight? Uh, not that I can see. No, maybe no. he was involved in it, but he didn't direct it. But he also directed uh, Border, which is a really interesting. Yeah. Uh, is it Norwegian, Scandinavian, Scandinavian film? kind of yeah. mythology? Really weird, but kind of really interesting. Weird. Yeah, if you got yeah, if you, that's a hidden, hidden gem. gem. Of Hidden Gems, I'm sure, sure Zakharov knows about that film as well. Yeah. Really, really good Hidden Gems. So he directed that as well. So he's one of those upcoming directors that can really yeah. do both uh, mainstream, but also Hidden Gems as well. So go check out uh, Apprentice when it comes out later oh, this year. Oh, watch that. And Sebastian Stan, remember we saw him do mm. Tommy and Pamela? I remember yes, we yes, remember we were yes. like, oh, Sebastian Stam, like Tommy Lee, jo Tommy Lee, yeah. uh, you know, the band guy, and we look like, shit. Yeah, we can, in yeah. that, he does, he can pull it off. So yeah. I reckon, I Tonya, I Tonya, with, uh, what's the name, Barbie? What's oh, her yeah. name again? Uh, Margot Robbie. That was a Margot really Robbie. good film. Yeah. So he's he's and also he was he's actually also in Dumb Money. Have you seen Dumb Money yet? Yes, we saw Dumb Money. Dumb Money um, is a good film. He was in that briefly as well. But briefly as well. Very that's, versatile. That's, Don't just think of him as a Marvel man. He's versatile. Exactly. Yeah, and Dumb Money, that's right up our alley because obviously crypto mm, and you know, exactly. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, exactly. So coming to a podcast near you. Um, all right, okay. <laughs> so let's speak about this one. Uh, now, these movies, I mean, I remember when the first Knives Out movie came out. It's been a while now. Uh, Daniel Craig, this kind of all-star cast. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Don Johnson, and um, mm. Anna de Armas was at the heart of it. And um, I think his name is Benoit Blanc, who plays this. When I first yeah. heard him, Deval, I don't know, it, accent. his accent like, just yeah, put me I mean, off. Yeah. But yeah. then you slowly, slowly get into it. And then the second one came out, Netflix, they bought the rights. And now Deval, the third one is coming out. So tell us about this. Yeah, so Knives Out. Because oh, originally, so... Uh... Oh, Gordon Bennett, what's his name now? Uh, Ryan Johnson or Rian yes. Johnson. Rian Johnson uh, he that. was given a free deal, a free movie deal from Netflix. Mm. And that free movie deal was uh, Netflix majority, majority, but also I think there was a sort of a release in the cinema that sort of uh, coincided with the Netflix release. Mm. So we had, Netflix, we had uh, Knives Out in 2019. 2022, we had Glass Onion. Yeah. Uh, and that one had you know, Graham Norton. Uh, was Batista in that one? I want to say, yeah, was Batista, he? That, that one? was one Batista, yeah. yeah. Batista, Jeanette, Jeanette, Janelle Monet was in it. Oh, yeah, she was great. Uh, yeah. Jessica Henwick, you had a mm -hmm. bunch of people. Uh, Leslie O'Doom Jr. from yep. Exorcist, uh, Ethan yep. Hawke, a lot of people, really good film as well. And now the third one is now going to be coming out uh, next year, and that's going to be called Wake Up dead man mm. so make of that as you will as you know knives out is all kinds of twists and turns that could mean anything anything so, and interestingly devout there's uh at the beginning if people go back right people go back to watching the second knives out movie there's a scene in the movie where daniel craig he's in the bathtub and he's mm. talking to he's he's having a facetime with about mm. three or four different people yep Yep, now, yep, one yep. of those people is the girl from, um, her, her name is Natasha, uh, Le Natasha Leon, uh, Lichon, I can't even remember. She was the one from Russian Doll. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one from American Pie as well. Yeah. American Pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. the reason why I bring it up is she's got her own show where she plays uh, a private investigator. Oh, she yeah. has a special ability where she can sense when someone's lying. So she goes from town to town. Uh, so we, I saw it on that's the on plane. on Netflix as well, yeah? That's on Netflix. I, I don't know if it's on Netflix, okay, but okay, I saw okay. it on the plane. And mm. Rianne Johnson is a executive producer on that show as well. Thanks. Okay, 
that makes well, sense. Kind of little bit of a universe going on over there. So okay, yeah, okay. I'll be I'll be interested in watching that one. So we'll see what happens there. Now listen, I want to quickly mention this thing over here. This popped up on my newsfeed, and I thought this is interesting. So obviously Keanu Reeves, not only this kind of mega Hollywood superstar, but apparently he's supposed to be one of the nicest guys there is out there. Mm-hmm. And apparently there was a bidding war. At, um, at some sort of kind of movie, possibly even kind of uh, can. But check this out. There was a bidding war for a new Keanu Reeves movie, which is set on an aeroplane, and none other than A24 has snapped up the rights. And you and I, we're great fans of A24 movies. We we reckon they're kind of independent. You know, yeah. they um, kind of really go a bit kind of, you know, weird on some of their stories, but on a, in a good way. Yeah. Mm. So... Um, Check this out. It says, um, so the movie comes from two time Palm de Award, Palm d'Or winner Ruben Ostland, the filmmaker behind the 22 Palm d'Or winner Triangle of Sadness. Oh, and, say yeah. no more. You said enough. I know. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? When, when mm-hmm. I read that, I was like, this is going to be great. So A24 have picked up a Keanu Reeves movie, which is going to be great, I reckon, Deval. And it's set on an aeroplane. So, um, so that, the other film was on a boat. And that was a triangle of sadness is a great film. Now so it's boat plane. It's, it's, it's all in environments where you can't get off. It's like you're yeah. confined. You have to deal with situations within a confined environment. And a plane is a next <laughs> level of that. So I can only imagine what's going to happen. And the thing is the movie's called the entertainment system is down. So imagine the end of the plane. <laughs> The, the entertainment system is down and all this shit hits the fan. <laughs> I can not wait for that because you already know this is going to go and this is going to look at social, yes. like, you know, classes, like first class and now first that with economy, <laughs> how they're going to interact. Like, is this going to bring everyone to the say, oh, this, you this know what? Wicked. What a no, title. No, no, no. What a title. I, I already know this film's going to be good and now yeah. I manage my expectations. Exactly. Like, I already know. Yeah, so go, go go out and check read up about that. And when that obviously comes up, we'll definitely watch it and uh, we'll let you know about that. Now, this one I want to quickly kind of mention. So Marvel, this is, it's so weird because Marvel hasn't been in our movie news for a while and we kind of things are a mm. bit quiet. And, you know, mm. I think, I guess that's on purpose, but check this out. Apparently someone called Terry Metalis is going to serve as the showrunner for a new Marvel show. And this is going to be Vision. So they've confirmed that Vision... Mm. Um, is going to come to the, our small screens in 2026. So, Deval, uh, we know that Marvel are changing the landscape of the you know, MCU, less movies, less TV shows, only focusing on one or two big movies because they're mm. focusing on quality rather than quantity. So, 2026, a new vision. I mean, because we know that there is a vision, a version of a vision out there somewhere, this white, yeah. kind of in a white suit thing. Yeah. What do you make of it? Oh, I don't know. I'm glad they're taking their time, put it that way. So I'm hoping that because they're taking the time, they've let it, you know, marinate. They've got all the angles worked out. Uh, you know, it's time for the white vision to shine now, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but uh, yeah, the, the white vision was, he was very interesting. Mm. I remember he was talking about the, oh, what was that? What was that? The ship of Theseus. And, oh, you, how do you remember? <laughs> oh my God. But the question. How do you well, remember? I think, I think we had, didn't we have, um, we had, we had, we had Salonius on the show, didn't we? When we were speaking we had, about it. I think Did so, we? yeah. And it's like, it's such a deep, like, the, 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 theology or something. I just like, what is this? It was a mad question. And you have to go and research what the question means and the answer. You probably won't ever find out. So Exactly. Maybe so, we'll find uh, out. <laughs> does this mean, so what, so then the other question that people will probably have, our listeners will have is, well, then what about Wanda? What about Ma- Wanda Maximoff? Because we saw her at the end of, um, you know, Doctor Strange, she got, yeah. you know, under the rubble somewhere. She's probably got to come back, hasn't she? Possibly, yeah, because he's going to... Well, then, will that version still have that connection with her? Mm. That's what I don't know. So maybe he'll be more free and just find himself a next, you know, lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep you posted on that one. And, um, yeah, so finally, let's speak about this. So Mer- Morgan Spurlock, man, um, passed away. Mm. So rest mm. in peace. Just remind us, um, what, what was he What was he in? Because a lot of people won't know, but they'll know the net. If they saw the face, they'll know, but they might not know the name. 
Yeah, so Mo- Morgan Spurlock, he was uh, the uh, producer, f- filmmaker, director. Mm. He's the person that most famously yeah. uh, made the documentary, which actually <laughs> actually is a it's a when it first years. came out. It's 20 years ago, so it's the anniversary corner. I probably should have yeah. mentioned it later on. But, yeah, so Super Size Me is a documentary yeah. uh, that looks at the fast food industry and in particular, it looks at McDonald's. And he was mm-hmm. basically at the time saying that in America, people are just obese, they're this and that, and there's so many diseases and conditions that is caused by, you know, unhealthy eating, mm-hmm. you know? So he, put, he goes out there, he puts his money where his mouth is, and he says... I will show people what this is like. So he goes out for 30 days and he just eats McDonald's. McDonald's. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, he eats McDonald's. Oh, and also what he does is shows that the fast food industry is designed to make you eat more because the McDonald's yeah. used to have a slogan. Once you order your thing, your meal, they'll say, do you want a large on that? Do you want a... Yeah. Do you want anything else? Yeah. Anything else? They'll always encourage you to have more. So mm. he, he did for 30 days, he just at McDonald's and then he, he put on lots of weight, his health yeah, deteriorated. So he showed, you know, in the most tangible way, he put himself as a test subject and he showed it. So, you know, so that's, that's what he's most famously known for. He has mm. done other stuff obviously as well, but that's the one that everyone really talks about. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately he, uh, he passed away due to complications with uh, cancer, yeah. only 54 years old, which is not very old, mm. you know, so it's not yeah. it's, it's not at all it's not at all so yeah r.i.p uh morgan spurlock all right okay we've got to move on and let's do streaming now this is a new i couldn't now i don't know if it's a show or is it a film but i know that jennifer lopez is in this so this is atlas and is it is this a sci-fi isn't it deval yes is it this is a sci-fi yeah, yeah. so this is uh mm. this is like a futuristic kind of film mm. uh this is uh, atlas is on netflix uh and this is starving uh JLo, Jenny from the block, and yeah. uh, this is basically about uh, a, a it's looking like a bleak kind of future, a bit dystopian, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and as an AI soldier, uh, an AI soldier has determined that the only way to end the war is to end humanity. So, this is looking at what Elon Musk and those sorts of people have always warned about, saying yeah. that. AI could end humanity. So we look yeah. at that Terminator, you know, all that kind of stuff. Sky, yeah. Sky, Skynet. Called Sky, Skynet. Yeah. So this is some people's version of of true life hell. Yeah. Of what could happen. So this is looking at how she's going to obviously, you know, be the hero yeah. and deal with the matter, deal with AI. Alongside her, we have uh, Sterling K. Brown. We have yeah. uh, Simu Lu. Yeah. Uh, and a bunch of other people. Mark Strong's in it as well. Probably going to be the baddie, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you never he's know. always the baddie. Yeah. Shazam. Yeah, we also have Ada Smith Erickson, who actually was uh, Riri Williams. No, no, sorry, wrong person. Got mixed up. Not her. <laughs> okay. uh, but yeah, anyways, a bunch of people in this. It looks, it looks interesting. I ain't seen it yet, to be honest, but mm. I'm going to watch it at some point. Maybe we can review it in, in the following weeks. At some point, yeah, we... Um... Yeah, I might leave that one to you. If you review that one and then let us know. I'll wait until I get your take on it. The only reason being, right, I don't know, man. I just, something about it. I, just, I don't know, like, you know, but, listen, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. There's just so much shit to watch, right? So I'm going to let, so Flix is, if you want to want Deval to watch it, get in touch with us yeah. and let's vote on it. Uh, so that's, that is called Netflix. Uh, that's called Netflix. That's called Atlas. And that's out on Netflix. Now let's move on to Trader. Now, okay, here we're getting into the good stuff. So, you know, Hollywood hasn't got a you know decent story between its legs, right? Mm. So, um, what are they doing? They either rebooting, rehashing, or bringing back characters from old universes and things like that. So, here we've got Beetlejuice two, and a part of me is thinking, right, why do we need another Beetlejuice? But then another part of me is like, oh, there must be millions of people around the world who probably want to know what ha- what happened to those characters. And obviously yeah. we've seen the resurgence of um, uh, Winona Ryder because she's been really big in um, Stranger Things. Yeah. Jenna Ortega, she's popping off at the moment. She's, you know, becoming really big uh, due to Scream, uh, Wednesday, uh, and all this sort of stuff. And uh, here we've got Beetlejuice Part 2. 
So the only, as far as the trailer's concerned, Deval, we've got Winona Ryder and we've got that that other older actress. I don't know what, I've forgotten what her name is, but she's, uh, she was in the original one. Oh, what's her name? Yes, uh, Catherine O'Hara. That's it. Catherine O'Hara yeah, and she's she was there, yeah. yeah she's she's kind of her career has kind of been on this big trajectory because she's mm. won a lot of awards for Shit's Creek I mean I haven't seen Shit's Creek but I know okay. she's in that show and um, she's done pretty re- you know really good in that um, mm. so yeah man so but what do you make of it? it it looks interesting it looks like it's captured the same old you know Beetlejuice vibe same old Tim Burton kind of vibe the way the he animation makes the film, well. kind of dark animated yeah the music it just captures that kind of vibe from what I can see also, uh, William Defoe's in it. Monica Bellucci, she looks yes. very fitting in it. Danny Danny mm-hmm. DeVito, obviously Michael Keaton comes back as uh, Beetlejuice himself. Yeah. Uh, and this one looks like you know I'm going to watch this, but this looks yeah. this looks interesting. Uh, the the film is actually called Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, so it's like mm. playing on the on the on the thing of saying it three times. I reckon it could be a third one. Beetlejuice Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. 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 You never know. So, but this looks interesting. Worth a watch, I think. This comes out uh, this year. In September. Okay, yeah. So we've got, we've got a bit. And uh, we'll definitely go out to the cinema and watch that one. And then the other one, yeah. so that's going to be a cinema release, but this next one is going to be a Netflix release. And just like Eddie Murphy did with Coming to America to uh, – that was an Amazon Prime release. Yeah. He's gone to Netflix now and probably got paid like a shitload of money. This is Berlioz Cop, uh, semicolon, Axel F. So this is kind of bringing back – that character from you know the eighties, the nineties, um, and character that I absolutely loved and adored. The first one I think came out in nineteen eighty three or nineteen eighty four. Really kind of foul mouth, yeah. like Chicago oh, cool. cop. Wow. Yeah, uh, goes to Beverly Hills and he has to crack a, a case, and then he's got to go back in part two and everything. So great. And you know what? This trailer I thought was going to be flat and I thought, you know, it's not going to be good. But you know what? It's got that same, it's got that Eddie Murphy vibe to it. I just hope that they do it justice because coming to America, you know, was kind of Mm. this kind of continuation of the story from the 80s. I hope they can do this justice, man. Yeah. Coming to America didn't, hit as well as people wanted it to because people loved the first one so much Mm -hmm. the first one uh, coming to america sorry uh beverly hills got 40 years ago so do the maths and think how old was he when he came out with that and he's he's there now 40 years later that's mad Mad. when you think about it that way that is mad but and he's still looking good man exactly my man's got he's got 10 kids to feed or is it 11 (laughs) so my man needs to bring out these films so (laughs) Gordon, uh, oh, J- Joseph yeah. Gordon Levitt's in it, Kevin Bacon's in it, yeah. uh, and you've got uh, other cast members from the original uh, mm. sort of, you know, trilogy. So, yeah, this one, I think, I reckon, I'll be honest, I don't think this is going to be as good as people want it to be, mm. uh, because, you know, you, you can't beat the old feeling, can you? Exactly. And uh, some of the new cats, you know, might not even appreciate this film, so... Yeah. I think it's going to be in in sort of the middle ground, but that's just my opinion. Absolutely, I, I've I've got a feeling that you know, yeah, it's, it, you know, you're right on that one. But we will definitely watch this now. This is coming out in July. I want to say, Devel. Yeah, uh, this year. Yeah, July. Yeah, that's right. July. Yeah. Okay, so summer yeah. movie, summer movie. Depending on where you are, uh, we will watch it and we will review that and we'll let you know what we think. And, uh, okay, that leads us nice, nicely into Anniversary Corner. So this fits in with one of the movies that we're going to be speaking about. Um, so this is from 2009. Uh, this is 15 years ago. And this is Zombieland. And I remember when this movie came out uh, in cinema, not a huge amount of publicity around it. I saw this, um, you know, back, in the, back during that time. I was obviously, you know, we were watching, we were deep in, um, we must have been deep into... Um, <laughs> uh, deep. <laughs> I better not finish that sentence. Uh, deep into um, what, what was um, the Walking Dead? When did that come out? That came out twenty ten. Walking Dead. 2010. Okay. So 2010. I think we're probably watching Spark. No, I can't. We're watching then. Probably That's Heroes. Fine. Probably Heroes, Heroes are watching then. Probably. Yeah. I think. And yeah. then this kind of like you know this kind of like nerdy <laughs> film. You know, it comes out, like I said before, not a lot of publicity. I went to the cinema to watch it. You know, um, it's got the guy from, uh, what's his name? You know, the one from Social Network. Oh, Jesse Eisenberg. Jesse Eisenberg. It's yeah. got Woody Harrelson. It's got uh, uh, Emma. Emma Stone. 
Emma Stone, Oscar winner, future winner. Oh, yeah, Emma Stone. Mm. So it was brilliant, like kind of funny, you know, irreverent take on the whole zombie kind of genre. You know, this guy, he's living alone and then he's got to take a road trip and he meets these other characters. And by the end of the movie, he's fallen in love. He's made some friends and, you know, he's kind of, you know, happy in his life, although, albeit in this zombie kind of world. Mm. And, um, yeah, it was it was fun. It was interesting. It was it was good at the time, I reckon. And then they did one recently, didn't they? Did a second one? Double Tap. Yeah, that came out. Uh, when was that? Twenty twenty or something? Or twenty twenty one? It took a while. Yeah, it took ages, isn't it? Yeah, I I actually saw the 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 first one only before the second one. Mm. I hadn't seen it. I hadn't seen the first one when it came out. I'll be honest. Yeah, hadn't seen it. So yeah, Double Tap came out in twenty uh, twenty. Oh, 2019, sorry. Yeah, five years ago. Wow, okay. Mm. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so time flies. Um, time flies. So 10 years after the first one. So this one yeah. is got seven and a half on IMDb. It's pretty kind of highly rated. And if you go on, um, you'll see kind of, you know, some of the reviews and everything. Now, Ruben, the director of this one, Ruben Fleischer, Fle mm. Fleischer, Fleischer, he went on to direct another big movie, I think, Deval. Or he wrote another big movie. Yeah, from what I've seen, so he's yeah he's done uh, Venom, <laughs> 2018. Okay, uh, that was Uncharted, big Gangster Squad. Uh, yeah, he's done quite a few. He does like a bit of comedy in his films as well. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, Venom's a big one there. Venom, Let There Be Carnage, the second one as well. He's an executive producer. Uh, okay, so yeah, so those yeah. kind of zombie, um, zombie land and venom, those were kind of like you know his big movies. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie, go check it out. And if you're a fan of the horror comedy genre plus the zombie genre, I think it's going to be mm. right up your alley. And that leads us into uh, our film review section. So we've got a couple of movies that we want to speak about. So, Deval, do you, what do you want to tackle first, Taro, or do you want to do Furiosa? I'll do Furiosa first. Okay, let's do Furiosa from, from sort of dystopian worlds kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, let's speak about this then. So, listen, look, Matt. So, we had Mad Max Fury Road, which came out in 2015. And um, and before that, we had the kind of the Mel Gibson movies, which were made in the 80s. And I remember those 80s, uh, those early Mad Max movies as kind of, mm. you know, this dystopian, wasn't sure what was going on. And, like, you know, you got these weird kind of characters in there. The, wo the world has gone to shit, basically. Mm. And, um, you know, they're, you know, they're in the outback and there's all desert and there's crazy people around. And then you've got this one lone road warrior who's kind of got any sense of justice in this kind of mean world. He's an and, ex cop, um, I think, at the time, isn't it? Yeah, something Mel like Gibson. that. Mel Gibson. Mm. Mel Gibson. And then his wife, had got, there was a tragedy that, that befell his wife and he's out there kind of getting revenge and everything. And then we've got this kind of Fury Road, uh, which was in 2015 starring... Um, uh, Charlie's Theron and then we had Tom Hardy and apparently years after that movie was made so we started hearing about the kind of the making of that movie and about how you know the stunt work and kind of no CGI and about the relationship that Tom Hardy had with Charlie's Theron apparently mm. they hated each other on Is set it? yeah so he would turn up late there was one incident where apparently he um he was so late to mm. the set she had been there for three, four hours and they had a massive, massive like argument. It was, it, it's detailed in a book that was kind of like written years afterwards. And, um, and he has apologized. Uh, if you go back to one of his interviews, he's yeah. turned around and he said he was a bit of a dickhead. He was young. He didn't know basically how to deal with it because it was a massive movie mm. and uh, there was a lot of pressure on them. And now here we are nine years later, 2024, we've got this. So we've got Furiosa, but this time it's played by, uh, Anya Taylor Joy. She's the younger yeah. version of that character in in that uh, 2015 movie, and it's a road movie again. Like you know, it's you know, there's definitely you know, there's action. There's the crazy, crazy character played by um, Chris Hemsworth, Dementus. You mm. got Immortus Joe, which for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what is going on with him. Like you know, he's got this kind of pipe shit going on, and like you know, and I want I want to kind of you know. I want a backstory on him kind of in a way, but I mean, it's set in this world where the world's gone to shit. You know, it starts off with, you got some kind of video footage of people just kind of ravaged by something. They don't explain what's happened, but we know that there's some sort of dystopian kind of end of the world thing happened and mm -hmm. people are desolate. They're, they're desperate. There's no food. There's, you know, they're trying to find gasoline and gas and like, you know, all these sorts of things. And then, the movie starts off in this kind of 
you know, focus on this young girl, the young girl called Furiosa. She's living in this kind of idyllic little world. She gets kidnapped. And then literally within about five or six minutes of the movie, the action is just basically just starts. And then from then on, it's kind of goes off into kind of different directions and everything. That's the setup. And then what I found interesting though, Deval, was Anya Taylor-Joy. We don't mm. actually get to see her until about 45 minutes into yeah. the movie. <laughs> I was like, when, when, do, when is this girl like, popping up? Like, when is she actually going to be in the movie? So that was interesting. Oh, and then the, my gosh. the transition from the young girl to Anya Taylor-Joy and that kind of, that whole thing. How does she become Furiosa, the one that we see with Tom Hardy and everything? We get to find out exactly what her journey is. You know, you know, she gets taken. How is she going to get back? And, you know, all these things. So we get answered, you know, a lot of questions kind of get answered. Um, now, Compared to the 2015 movie, which I thought had the pacing was like you know, someone on basically crack cocaine, that that movie, man, was just like 180 miles per hour. Everything's going breakneck speed. This one, I noticed, I'm not sure if you noticed it, but there was kind of slower moments, kind of like quieter moments. So you had moments where Chris Hemsworth, like, you know, he's basically speaking a lot or there's moments of just kind of, just silence flipping Anya Taylor joy. She's probably only got like about 20 lines in the movie. 30 lines to be precise. Yeah. <laughs> that's literally, it's just, it, she said there were like weeks sometimes where she'd be on set and she didn't have any words, any lines, but obviously a lot of her acting was in some ways more difficult. She said, because it was all emotional or visual. They said a lot of it was her to do with her eyes and she's got really big eyes that can really tell a lot. So you notice sometimes during the film, in certain scenes, her, just her eyes are lit. Like there's a bit of a slash of light just on her eyes, and that's where you sort of that's where your focus goes to. So that was very intentional, they said, uh, mm. in, in part of the production. But uh, but you're right; it's very very. It's quite it's quite a different film. It's quite yeah. A different film. yeah, it is it is definitely a different film. And um, so the fifth now. I, I I think I prefer Fury Road. I I, okay. I think I I thought that was I kind of for me. Yeah, I, 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 I thought kind of looking back now, I think I prefer that. But here's the thing: when this movie started, I mm -hmm. wasn't impressed with the CGI. Th th I was like, there was some bits in the beginning of the movie where I thought, hang on a second, they've used some really dodgy CGI shots, and it kind of took me away from it. But then, mm -hmm. as we kind of get into the story, it picks up. We've got this other kind of character called. Um, uh, Pretoria, Jackie's kind of like another road warrior. He comes along and he kind of helps her out and he kind of plays that Mel Gibson-y type of a figure. I, uh, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. he's got that kind of a face. Well, second, I thought, is that him? Did the timelines <laughs> mix? I thought, or did they, did they match up? Yeah. Is that him? Could it be him? But Exactly. So he's kind of got that, you know, there's that Mel Gibson-y type of a figure. But again, man, this got mm. non-stop action in there. You know, you've got some mad kind of scenes, mad characters. Yeah. Um, you know, and then it just kind of expands that whole Mad Max universe. Yeah. Now, interestingly, this is called a Mad Max saga. So I'm assuming yeah. we're it's gonna awesome. get. Are we, get we? Are we getting like we must be getting one more, man? I reckon so. I reckon so. I think they 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 doing that so it gives people the association of what the whole Mad Max saga was. Because remember, there's three Mad Max films: Mad Max, mm. Mad Max. I think was it Road Warrior or something? Yes. And Mad Max Thunderdome that had Tina yeah. Turner. Yes. And obviously we got now we've got the newer ones, which I think there's mm. going to be one more to cap off that trilogy. Sure. Uh, you know, but. But yeah, what did you I make of it? I I don't know what. I enjoyed it. I mm. didn't. I didn't. I didn't hate it. Mm. Uh, I'll probably give it somewhere. I know it's a bit middle of the groundish, but I'll probably give it a seven and a half out of ten or something like that. But yeah. I think I think I was interested that it was interesting that a lot of the film was the little girl, and yeah. the little girl done well. Yep. I don't know who she was, where she came from, and this little girl done well. The younger yep. Furiosa, she was in the film for a long time, and she'd been through a lot of shit. That chase where she was, you know, in the gardens with her friend, and then somehow. You know, they, they basically come come across these mad people yeah. and they get kidnapped and then they it seemed like the Amazonian kind of world, these ladies. Yeah, like idyllic and like, you yeah, know. Yeah, give chase and that chase was good. She's yeah. very, very like good sniper and mom. she wasn't going to give up. Was that a mum? Yeah, mum was not going to give up. And then, you know, just all that, the whole transition from being safe to unsafe, that was really good. And I really think Chris Hemsworth's character 
Dr. Yeah. Dementis, he stole the show a little bit for he me because he's, he's one of those villains that I, I'm not going to spoil it, mm. but I, I want to see, I want to see more of him. Mm. <laughs> like he's yeah. one of those villains a bit like how, you know, how we see Killmonger, Loki. I'm not yeah. saying it's on that, on that level, but certain villains, you know, they're bad, but you kind of like them because they've, yeah. they've got charisma. You know, they're a bit of a, you know, they make you laugh and they do stupid things and you don't want to see them go. No. I mean, Chris Hemsworth was a very different, he's, he's versatile there. He was, no. he, he was very different. You know, how many movies do you see Chris Hemsworth as, as kind of like the, the villain type? Like, you I mean, don't see Only one other time was the it Spider Island or something, or what was that film oh, on Netflix? Oh, yes, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, I think I've seen him in one other movie place. where he's... Yeah, he plays like kind of uh, another kind of like a bit of a villain type of a thing. But yeah. it, you're right, he's got a kind of like prosthetic nose and he yeah. that, that kind of real, you know, put it this way. If you, you can go into this movie and you could imagine what, what would happen to society if there was the end of the world. And this is exactly what would happen, man. Mm, there would be yeah. a breakdown in order. People would just kind of, you know, go like mad and you know fighting and killing and like you know you name it that whole thing would happen and you need these guys these kind of crazy alpha male guys to kind of mm, try and control mm, these groups mm, and that's what he plays right yeah. um but it's an interesting role for him actually which i thought was actually really good um anya taylor joy she, she was good yeah, she's good as well. And she's got that look, right? She's got this, something yeah. about the look in her eyes and she can do so many different things. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, I would have liked it if she bulked up a bit for the role because yeah. the role is, is physically demanding and sometimes she doesn't get... I don't, I don't think she gets into real real hand, hand-to-hand fights. No. But, you know, it would have been nice to see her bulk up a bit for the role because she did look a bit flimsy. That's the only thing. Yeah. Uh, but she's very, obviously, like, she has she has good combat intelligence and she's she's a, she's a survivor so that's yeah. why she you know gets to the you know the end of the film yeah otherwise she would never last in a world like exactly. that exactly uh but yeah no, it was yeah interesting. no i agree I, I agree with what you're saying um and what do you reckon so if they did a fast forward now and mm. they brought out a third movie who because charlie's throne i'm assuming just say they don't go with charlie's throne and they bring in like kind of like an older version of charlie's throne you know, that character of Furiosa, who do you reckon they could bring in? Who's going to be... What do, what do you mean an older version before uh, Fury Road? Or you mean an older version after the events of Fury Road? An older version after the events of Fury Road. Oh, I see. So, then, okay, so they go okay, into okay. the future, like, yeah. you know, we like an older, older person. I reckon Charlie's for well, whether she'll do it or not, because it's been mm. by the time if that happens again, it's going to be another five years or so, isn't it? Maybe yeah. more. So by then, she, she can will still be do that. Yeah, good, exactly. Actually. Yeah, you're right. You know, so I don't see her not being able to do it. But yeah, this film, I think, yeah, some of the characters, the names of even the world, I think this one showed a bit more of the Mad Max world. We had yeah. uh, Bullet Island or whatever it was yes. called, we had uh, the petrol, what did they call it? Gas, gas, gas land. Gas town, sh- gas town. So yeah, and it showed all the different areas and yeah. the factions and the the sort of uh, deals that all these different tribes make to try mm-hmm. and survive in this world, and it just gave it a bit more of a, you know, a bit more of a wider uh, sort of law to the to the to the, to the situation. So I did mm-hmm. appreciate that uh, and seeing just how it's not all fighting. You have got to make deals with people to survive. Yeah. You got to trade and all that kind of stuff, which is what happens today. This shit it's happens really... today, but obviously it's not so rugged. But it's just a mad. It's a, <laughs> it's just mad. Some of these people are willing to die just because the the, the leader says jump off a cliff no, or joke. jump off exactly. a cliff. It's mad. That's cr- it's mad, crazy. But, I know. It's, it's mad, but yeah, I, I like the film. I the, wonder. The... I wonder if they'll take it in a direction where we get to see kind of like that mad. Uh, the the sorry, the uh, Mel Gibson type of uh, a character. It will be still female led, you mean? Or, yeah, so at the moment mm. we've had Charlie Theron, yeah, you know, the Furiosa, and then we had Anya Taylor Joy, and then the original movies where this kind of yeah. Mel Gibson road yeah. warrior, this kind of yeah. male type of thing, yeah, will it go off in that direction or will they keep stick to the female? No, you know how it is these days, you know, so it's probably going to stick to the female, I reckon. Mm. And I think what we got in this film, we got a touch of the sort of Mel Gibson character coming, yeah. He did his thing, but he wasn't the main person. So I think no. I can see it continuing that for one more film, at least, and having an, having that modern trilogy angle mm. to it. 
Uh, so yeah, George Miller from 1979. That's 45 years ago. He directed he's that one. I think he's directed all, all of these films. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. He's directed it's from them all. His so. brain, man. It's from yeah. his crazy bonkers brain. Uh, I mean, the stunt scenes, the the great stunts and mm. everything, the action set pieces. Like I said before, he this guy. When you look at Fury Road, yeah. like, I, it was all practical all yeah. practical and yeah. there was just a few bits at the beginning of the movie which i thought the cgi was just CGI, a bit yeah yeah off was just and, a bit off Go on. remember this, this is the film where i think there was a scene that took nearly two months to film Jeez. and i think it's i think it's that long sort of truck scene with it on yeah. is it fury road and they Man. just there's all kinds of battling and attacks are happening while they're driving the truck that took ages to film so yeah. I, yes, and man. you know what? Similar, similar kind of setup in this movie as well with that big rig. Uh, mm. But yeah, so definitely, look, it's, if you've seen Fury Road, you're going to want to watch this movie. I'm going to watch it again. I need yeah, to watch yeah. Fury Road, to be honest. And, yeah. and whether or not, you know, uh, you know, you, I came away from this thinking the movie was interesting. It had some really good, you know, bits in there. Chris Hemsworth, like you said. But I think I liked the pacing, even though the pacing of Fury Road was mad, 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 mad. I still kind of feel like as if it was really kind of suspenseful and, you know, the tension was higher in that movie. And this one, it was kind of had slower moments, which some people might find boring. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, but yeah, it's worth a watch. Definitely. Definitely give it a watch. Yeah. All right. So that is the end of our review for Furiosa, yep. but Deval is going to be speaking about another movie. So Deval, take it away. Yeah. So this one, I'm going to do just a quick sort of mini review on this one. This one is called Tarot. Uh, so tarot is basically for tarot cards. So for people that mm. want to learn of their future and their life, uh, tarot cards, I think they lend to astrology, mm. astrology, like reading the cards, like, you know, if, if Venus is in retrograde or whatever, <laughs> whatever you know, Saturn and yeah. this and that. So it's reading the, the cards. The planets and everything yeah, like that. that kind of, I think that's what tarot is. I think because mm. in the film, they, they kind of talk about that a bit. Uh, but yeah, so just a real quickly say, so this one is called Tarot. It just came out uh, recently. So it came out in May 2024. Uh, this one stars, uh, most notably, is uh, uh, Ned from uh, Spider-Man. For Spider-Man, mm -hmm. you know, and some of the well, Infinity War as well. He was in that. So Jacob, yeah. Jacob Batalon. Yeah. Uh, he's in it. Uh, also stars a bunch of other people. I'm not going to mention all of the names, but mm -hmm. you'll see them if you watch the film. Uh, so Tarot is about a bunch of, they're all kind of... Uh, college kids this is in mm. america they're all college kids uh i don't know roughly what age they are maybe they're in the second year of college or something like that i don't know yeah and they all hang out together there's about six or seven of them all hang out together they you know, have their party they do their work they're, they're good kids they're, they're nothing wrong with them all good kids mm. there's a couple of relationships within that group uh ned i'll just call him ned for the <laughs> sake of this exactly. in this though he's called Paxton, but let's just call him Ned from Spider-Man, Spider-Man's yeah. best friend. So Ned, he's like the joker of the group. He's very much Ned in this mm -hmm. as well. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's what happens. So they're in the party. They go, they do an Airbnb. They rent out this nice home where they're having their party. And then uh, one of the group, one of the, the young lady, she sees an old box because they're snooping around in a place that's been locked off and says, do not enter. Jeez. They snoop because they're looking for more alcohol. So they yeah. snoop, they find a box, do not enter, they enter, they find these old, nasty looking tarot cards. Mm. Um, and these tarot cards all look creepy. You've got the mad like devil this, that, that there's all kinds of pentacles, oh, nasty stuff, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, as the kids are, they oh, what is this? What's oh, this? this? This looks bad. Let me go into it. <laughs> then they go into it, open the cards up. She's got experience of reading tarot because her auntie or her grandmum showed okay. her. Convenient. Yeah. Said, okay, guys, let's read our tarot. You get in a circle. She reads everyone's tarot one by one, puts them out and says, oh, you are this. You've got to stop being more stubborn, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And everyone's like, oh, my gosh, that's accurate. That's accurate. <laughs> but they all end in something negative. So someone ends in the clown. Someone ends in... Uh, Therefore, all ending negative stuff, but she interprets that as, oh, death is not always a bad thing. Yeah. It could be the beginning of something new. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> the hangman. Oh, do maybe now. that means that oh, you have no. to now put something in balance because you hang, I don't know, something. Okay. And then, okay. so she reads it all, and then literally day after, one of them that, that got their thing read, 
uh, dies. Oh, one by they one. They die in their dorm. Uh, and that one, they go into the, they hear some noise. They go and investigate, as you do. <laughs> they investigate with the noise. They go into the, they go into the attic. Yeah. And then somehow some some ghoul, some mad ghoul. Because it is spiritual as well. This is not just like Final Destination. Oh, so there's a like thing mental. there. It's yes, there is a, a presence. They, okay. they unlock something evil. Oh, so this person falls off the ladder and gets hung. So the hangman card comes to life. Okay. So each card that they dealt then comes to life. To so right, one okay. by one, they start to get knocked off. And we did, get to see... Did, did someone pull the devil card? Yes, yes. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So one by one, we get to see the card. We see it as the audience, but obviously other friends don't see it all. But then yeah. the police get involved and say, what's happened? Like two of your friends have died in two days. And they're like, oh my gosh. This is not, what, what, what's going on here? And then Ned is like, this is not a coincidence. This is not a coincidence. Like we had our tarots read and like but the police don't believe them. So they start to go and investigate and they go together. While they're together, one of them dies. And mm -hmm. in her card, it says, do not run away from your problems. In the car, something happens and they see like this, this like, like ghostly thing happen in the car she gets scared and she runs away and the girl says don't run and so she's running as she runs she dies good that's all right what are you running to, are you running to? joker <laughs> it's a good the deaths, the deaths are good i must so, say the deaths, really are they yeah they are, so, they they are creative. Ned, so does ned what does he ned he draws the joker card oh. and this joker is not no it is like that no uh like it called? From, uh, from Batman and Joker. Yeah, it's a different kind of Joker. This Joker looks evil. Oh. This Joker gets him, corners him, <laughs> and I'm not going to say what happens to him because his, yeah. his, his one's actually funny. Okay. But yeah, each, basically, one by one, they all kind of get killed off until there's a yeah, small number left. And they, they actually find someone else who actually experienced this same tarot card. The, oh, so, so they, they a find, survivor. They find an old lady who's like, oh, yes, <laughs> I've like also gone through this. It? Yeah, I've also gone this, and I was the last survivor. She says, <laughs> <laughs> the I was the last creepy, survivor. Yeah. Uh, so she tells them what to do, and then basically they all team together. And she she comes to the house, gets the cards, and she's like, okay, I've done this before. I will fight. <laughs> so then she goes against the evil, and within two yeah. seconds she's dead. <laughs> She survived. She's probably she survived oh, like, you know, 50, 60 years. Exactly. And as soon as she meets these kids, that's it. Two minutes later, she's dead. You're the, one, you're, the one you're the one with experience. You've survived it. And you turn up and die. What, these, what chance have these kids got? <laughs> mad. It's mad. She dies of madness. Her <laughs> death. It's a madness. <laughs> yeah. It's mad. <laughs> the I deaths are it. good. The thing is, the deaths are good. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah, they get to the end and they have to fight. They have to face death and then the devil. Yeah. The last two oh, people, death Jesus. and the devil. And I tell you, when I say all these cards, if you can think of the most creepiest oh. looking things, it's there. Yeah, it's there. It's okay. mad. So obviously, you know, people got to survive. So they fight against it and somehow, you know, a couple of them survive or whatever. Yeah. Um, and um, is it, does it set up like a second part or something? A little bit, yeah. There was a bit okay. more, a bit more closure than I would have thought. Because mm. the reason the tarot is evil is because someone from back in the day, from hundreds of years ago, they were cursed by some rich person, some old king, and they killed their daughter. Oh. So this person that could read tarots then cursed everyone, killed right. herself. Her spirit was trapped into the tarot cards. So oh, anyone that reads the tarot cards gets her wrath. Okay. And she's just she's just killing everyone because she's angry at the world. <laughs> like it's like everyone else's fault. You know what I mean? Exactly. I really she really she already killed it. the king, the person that done her wrong, but she, she still wants to do yeah, so she still wants vengeance flip. Exactly. So, yeah. so they actually have to attack her within yeah. the cards and then sort of, you know, dead it off kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah. That, that kind of happens, but still you get the feeling because I think this film's done quite well in the box office, you know. Mm. It hasn't done so bad, yeah. So in the box office it's done uh I saw it a second ago. Yeah, so it's done. The budget was eight million. So pretty cheap compared well, to 
yeah, yeah, horror, yeah horror, I think good horror films don't have to be too expensive. So the budget was eight million dollars estimated, and so far it's done thirty one million dollars. That's decent. So it's almost like a four x, almost a four x mm. on the investment. So that's not bad. That's that's actually quite <laughs> decent. Yeah. So I can see a sequel. I can see a sequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so. uh, do you remember when kind of they were figuring out the next part of the Spider-Man and we saw these pictures of Ned with his shaved head? Yes. Do you remember And that? he was looking a bit slimmer. In this film, it's so funny you say that. In this film, he does look a bit, not as big as he was, but he looks somewhere mm. halfway. He's still quite big. But he's got a hat on the whole film. Is it? He's got a hat on the whole... This guy must not like his head. <laughs> he's got a hat on, a woolly hat the whole film. I think to myself, you're going to take it off. At some point. <laughs> the hat does not leave his head. It's, head in, a it's in his contract, um, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So the star of the movie is, is Ned, it's right? Him. Yeah. Yeah. It's him. Yeah. He's yeah. got the most lines, I'm assuming. He's got, he's got pretty much. Yeah. And he's, he's the most famous one mm. out of them all. He's been on Spider-Man, Marvel. So he's the one. So you can imagine I'm not going to say whether he dies or not, but yeah, he's, and he's just the same case. He's, he's Ned. He's literally, he's Ned, he's Ned. Okay. and he's in uni. So it goes to show he got into uni. Cause remember in Spider-Man, uh, no way home, he applies in, to go to university. And this so, could literally be that. Exactly. So he's oh. now in, in, in college or university. So yeah. Yeah. All right. So again, yeah. all right. So the, the final question then is a lot of people, a lot of our listeners are going to ask is, is it worth watching? I would say, yeah. I I, okay. I, was, I thought this was going to be shit. I thought, oh, mm. just, let me just go and watch this film. This is, this is one of the films. Yeah, where you I can't went, stay away from went, like a good thing, horror movie, right? I went to watch one film, and this mm. film was right after, okay. in in the same screenings. I just oh, sat okay. there, and I, I was like, one of them once. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> if no one kicks me out, I'll sit here. Nice so I, just, I saw it for free, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's better than I thought. Yeah, it's, it's not like obviously amazing, you know, but it's it's decent, it's enjoyable, and the, the deaths are creative. So yeah, it's cool. I, I, I like that. I'll, I'll, I can mm. get down with a movie like that. All right, so listen, yeah. look, folks, go check that one out. That's called Tarot, and um, yeah, have you ever had your like? Have you ever had mm. reading done? Have you ever, have you ever had a reading done? Never, I've never, I've never, never had a reading I'm doing done. That. I'm scared. No. Nope, I'm not doing that. I'd rather just imagine. Imagine if you went to someone and they, uh, you know, they do that thing where they 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 draw a card and they go, <gasps> like you know, and then like, they just like kind of like you know move backwards and you're like, what, what, like what the hell? I hate that. Oh my gosh! She's like, are you gonna get hit by a bus tomorrow? <laughs> I'm like, shit. <laughs> lock myself in the house and they call oh me and say no the bus <laughs> crashes into your house I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean that would be a wicked scene say, I would have gone outside <laughs> that, that would be a wicked scene oh, man seriously All right, listen you and I we, we got to write a horror movie um, oh, it's going to happen folks on the flicks yeah. we're going to write a movie and we're going to direct a movie at one point so uh, yep. keep it up with us so listen look that is the end of the show we really 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 hope you enjoyed it remember you know subscribe like do all that sort of stuff Li watch this episode actually on youtube because deval was really yeah. funny when he was yeah. talking about this movie uh watch this episode on youtube listen yeah. to it wherever you get your podcast and also on next week's show deval is going to be speaking about uh strangers chapter one which is another yeah. horror movie yeah um and then obviously we've got all the other stuff that's coming out on streaming and, and, and whatever so keep it locked with us and we really hope you enjoy the show and get in touch with us